Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in April. I read nine books in April so that's pretty good. I'm kind of mad because I was in the middle of a manga and I could have finished ten and I didn't do it but <laughs> things happen. I've read quite a few books though like I'm pretty proud of myself. This year is going well. I'm like five books ahead of my Goodreads schedule. That never freaking happens. So it's an exciting time and I read a lot of good ones just looking at it like I had a happy fun time. There was one two star read or whatever. The first one that I read is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. I actually like read a lot of this during March and then I finished it in April and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a four stars but it made me cry. Like it was one of those four stars. I really wanted to give it a five but it just wasn't quite there but like I was emotional at the end of it. It's pretty much a Peter Pan retelling in our modern day. It feels like fan fiction. I think the author even like makes it seem like fan fiction like they call it that and it, it is it's some peter pan and wendy fan fiction pretty much wendy and her brothers went missing a while ago when they were little and only she came back and then boom peter pan is coming to town and she keeps seeing peter in her town and she's like what's going on and then other kids are going missing so similar things that happened to her as a kid are happening and her and peter pan are trying to figure it out together and he's an older version of Peter Pan because shit's going wrong. It's really cute. I end up shipping them a lot and I really enjoyed this. I think this is definitely one of those that is just a fun happy time even though the ending made me cry. It was a heartwarming one. I think my only real big issue with it is like the middle part of the book. It just started to drag. It felt like not a lot was happening. Oh my god when you read this book count how many times Peter freaking grins and smiles. Like he smiles every freaking two seconds and I guess that's just a thing us writers do like I do that too but oh my god if you notice it you never unnotice it during this book he is always smiling <laughs> So the next book that I read was Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Menasala. I got this from Book of the Month and I thought this was going to be a really fun read. I think I gave it a three star though. It was a fun read. I enjoyed my time with it. It just didn't end up wowing me to be like a four star or anything, but I definitely enjoyed it and it's the start of a new series. It's a fun, cozy mystery sort of situation. Lila has a family restaurant you know, obviously with her family. One day, her ex-boyfriend, who is a really mean food critic, eats at the restaurant and then he drops dead after she gives him the food. Everyone thinks she poisoned her ex-boyfriend. And there's a whole bunch of crazy shit going on with this ex-boyfriend. Like, as we learn more and more, people are like, okay, he had diabetes, so did he just get in, like, a diabetic shock? Or did she really poison him? And she's having to go around town, like, trying to prove herself innocent. And the mystery wasn't really that great like it kind of it, it didn't feel like I don't know how to explain it dude it just felt like not very high stakes even though she literally could go to prison for life I don't know I guess because it had like a light-hearted feel to it but I really enjoyed the main character and her family and there was kind of romance forming but I guess since it's a series we're not really fully diving into that yet. I'm definitely intrigued to read further in the series. I just feel like there's more that I want to see, you know? And I guess since it's a series, that's gonna happen. The next book that I read was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I believe I gave this one a four stars. I listened to this one on audio. Got it from my used bookstore for pretty cheap too, so I was happy about it. This one is a hard-hitting one. It is a thriller following a whole rape trial case. So definitely major trigger warnings for any sexual assault, rape, anything like that because it heavily discusses it. So I was really interested in this book though. It kind of reminded me of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because there is a girl that is into true crime and she has a true crime podcast and in the second book of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, the main character has a true crime podcast a true crime podcast. So I was like, ooh, this sounds similar and I'm really glad I picked it up because it was really freaking good and we like got snippets of her podcast covering this rape trial that's currently happening in this small North Carolina town. I live in North Carolina so this was like a little bit too close to home. I was like really scared. This freaking trial was heartbreaking but I just feel like it handled the topic really well. I just enjoyed the main character's perspective. There was also a whole thing where this girl came 
kept messaging the main character for a completely different situation. This girl's sister died like 20, 30 years ago or something and it was in the same town and she's trying to get the podcast girl to investigate her sister's death because it wasn't put down as a murder but she swears it was a murder. So we have like those two issues going on throughout this book and it's a crazy journey. The book I read for school that I really didn't like was Boy Snowbird by Helen Oyayemi and I was really enjoying this one at first. I took a lot of notes but the ending dude oh my god the ending with this one just was so bad. I'll go into it a little bit. This book had such an interesting idea because it was like a fairy tale retelling of Snow White. So the main character Boy, her name's Boy, she has a baby with Snow White's dad. Snow White's family has been passing as white people for this 1953 setting and you know that's a thing that people did back then. They were really light-skinned so then the baby that they have her name is Bird. She ends up having a lot darker skin and I really liked the conversations we were having about how the different treatment Snow White got because she had really light skin compared to Bird. She had darker skin and the main character Boy was really mad and protective of her daughter and I really liked that whole conversation that we were getting in but then the ending just completely did something so weird and completely unrelated to that. There was transphobia portraying a trans character as someone who is sick and needs to be helped. You know, some people are going to try to say I just spoiled everything. I think that needs to be warned about because it is completely unrelated to the rest of the book and you know, it really sucked because this book was going places. I really like the conversations being had and I do not understand why that ending was there because that it made no sense with the rest of the book. Unfortunately, gave it two stars because of that because the ending was just that disappointing. The next book that I read was Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. It just gave me such good vibes. I listened to it on audio and then I made sure to get a physical copy of it because I just loved it that much. This one is just the freaking funniest idea. It is another mystery type thing. So this girl is a mom and she's an author. She writes like romance thriller type things and one day she is with her agent at a Panera discussing the plot of her book. Her books are kind of flopping and her agent's really mad at her right now because she hasn't been writing like she's supposed to. So she's discussing murder in her book and someone nearby I guess hears them and thinks they're talking about real murder and like they're hitmen. Like she thinks Finlay is a hitman and is going to kill people for money. So they slide Finlay a note saying, hey, this man, you need to kill him. I'll give you like $50,000 if you kill my husband. So she's like, whoa, I don't do this shit. But then, you know, she goes on a crazy journey. She really needs money. She is a single mom with two kids. Her husband's trying to take her kids away. So she kind of accidentally gets in this crazy shit and everybody's trying to kill each other. And this was just so good like the vibes were so good and then she starts writing a book about her life in this crime. Everything about this book was so good and it's apparently becoming a tv show but I'm terrified of that because Marlene King the person behind Pretty Little Liars is trying to adapt to this and that lady ruined Pretty Little Liars so badly so I do not trust her with anything. That might be a dumpster fire but I think this is going to be so good. It's going to have more books at least one more book that I've heard of so I'm super excited to read the sequel because this book was so much fun and I highly recommend it. Another book that I read for school was this writing fiction book, a narrative craft book by Jane Burroway. I've been reading this over the last couple months for my writing fiction class. I didn't rate it. It was fine. Like it was for class and I finally finished it this month because I finished my semester. Taught me some things but most of it I already honestly kind of knew. The next thing that I read was Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo and there's a bookmark in it because my boyfriend is currently reading it as well. I gave this three stars. I did a whole vlog on this talking about how it is overrated and honestly just go watch that freaking video. I did vlogs for all three of the books. I gave Siege and Storm another three stars and then Ruin and Rising. You know I haven't posted the vlog just yet so I'm, I'm not gonna say my rating. Go watch my freaking vlogs for this. A whole freaking TV show just came out and I reviewed that as well. I have a whole freaking Grishaverse playlist and I'm super excited about it but if you don't know anything about Shadow and Bone pretty much this girl she's the sun summoner in this fantasy setting so she has magical powers of the sun and that's a big deal in her world because there's this thing called the fold that is this huge 
huge black rift in their continent and they can't cross it because there's just complete darkness and there's monsters oh my god someone is mowing their lawn are you kidding but there's been a myth about a sun summoner who can like break through this darkness with sunlight and our main character alina finds out she's the sun summoner crazy shit happens the magical community is freaking out they're trying to use her crazy shit love triangle it's fun <laughs> But I still think it's definitely overhyped and I think the show made it 10 times better. I'm so excited about that show and seeing it continue in the future because it was so much fun to watch. So definitely go watch all my videos for that. Links down below because this one, like, you know, it wasn't as good as everybody was saying, but I reread it after six years and you know it's fine but it's just nothing special to me siege and storm i think i liked it a little bit more because there was a character named nikolai introduced and he is so much fun and he's actually the main character for another series by lee bardugo so i'm super excited to read that because i love that character so much and then ruin and rising was definitely my favorite out of the bunch which i feel like is an unpopular opinion because a lot of people seem to not really like the finale of this series and you're just gonna have to watch my freaking vlog if if you want more details on my thoughts but like almost cried so it was a bit better than the other two books i almost cried so those are all the books that i read i kind of flew through that because my head hurts and i do not feel like doing this and i'm sweating like it's gross right now thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know if you read any of these books as well what do you think about these books what are your thoughts and feelings on shadow and bone and all of these other crazy books let me know down below like this video comment down below have a good day please subscribe make sure to follow all my social medias which are linked down below and go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should already clicked and goodbye